up, Long Beach? Welcome back to GazetteSports.com. It's Tyler. And Mike. And this high school football video is brought to you by Naples Rib Company. On the banks of the 405, a couple of new rivals, Long Beach Poly and Mission Viejo, locking up in the Pac-5 quarterfinals. Raul Lara and the entire Poly program have never beaten Mission Viejo, but they've got a pair of great backs in Manu Samoa Luga and Gerard Wicks trying to turn the tide of history. Jackrabbits have been hearing in the media all week how they were going to get lit up in this game. The Jackrabbits will be destroyed by the two-seed Mission Viejo next week, Fred. Destroyed! That was Petros Papadakis uh, letting his feelings be known about how this game was going to go on NBC, no less. And don't let the handshakes fool you. These teams don't really like each other. The Diablos are going to kick this thing off to start the game. They're the number four ranked team in the country. John Juju Smith with an early mistake runs out of bounds on the kickoff. They're going to start on their own four. But Jarrod Wick says that's just more yards for me to eat up. He gets 10 on the first carry. And then they're going to use the... Uh, the tight end, Tyler. Brock Mecklenburg has not got a lot of passes. And then Manu Samoa Lauga just showing off that stable of running backs. He's going to pick up 42 yards right here, working up the left sideline, just getting his night going. Then Mecklenburg again, he didn't play last week. And then now he gets 24 yards down to the four. Then Tiedemann under center. Where do you think they're going? Back to those running backs. Gerard Wicks, what's up, Hollywood? As the flashes go off, Polly's got their early lead. If you need a check cash, you go to the bank. They go to their guy. However, Mission Viejo's got a guy, too. Ian Fever, their quarterback, is going to find Frank Schnicker. Can't make those names up. A 51-yard pass. Huge play for the Diablos. This is a fourth down. Fever converts this one to Sean Modster. Yeah, we saw the Diablos be very good on fourth down when these teams met last year. Now Alex Suchek from 11 yards out. He's going to run in for the touchdown. So Mission Viejo has their answer. 532 left in the first quarter. Still early. We got a shootout? Well, the Jackrabbits offense looked pretty composed. Ty Tiedemann finding Tom Tucker. And then back to Lauga, just out here eating, Mike. Another big chunk for the Warrior King as Manu goes down the right sideline. He had 12 for 128 in the first half alone. Yeah, people would love that game. And Gerard Wicks with truck the truck stick. stick. Get off the tracks. Eventually, the drive would stall out. Some penalties hurting the Jackrabbits and they were forced to punt it away, but that's all right. The defense would make a play. Pass complete here to, ah, Sean Modster. <laughs> and the rip from David Price. Jayon Brown falling on that one. Huge turnover. Bia! Yeah, Price put that thing on ice, and then Jayon comes in and cleans it up. Give the ball right back to Lauga, and he's going to move him down. Obviously, the running backs just tilted full forward at this point for the Jackrabbits, and then they're going to give it to Lauga again from two yards out, untouched into the end zone. Wow, Jackrabbits really seem to take control of this thing on the ground. That is exactly the formula, and the defense looking good with Joseph Wicker. Got him in a Wicker basket in the backfield. That's just a sophomore. He is a man on the edge, but the Diablos passing game would get going just before halftime, trying to drive for points and maybe tie this game. Redfield. Let go by Omari Lyles. That is really tough, and those yards are clutch because it gets him into field goal range. Yeah, a very weird play on the completion of Max Redfield. Then Zach Olson, a 42-yarder, just goes in. Might not have been good from 43, but the Diablos take the points. It's 14-10 poly at halftime. Coming out in the second half, Mission received the kick, but the juice, Caleb Turner, says nah to that drive. And now they punt it to John Juju Smith. He's just a playmaker, Mike. Well, he may be the most complete football player in Long Beach. Plays offense, plays defense, and uh, he plays a little special teams too. A 37-yard return plus 15 for the horse collar right there. The that flag comes. Don't worry. Yeah, there it is. There it is. Yeah, that gives Polly the ball on the Mission Viejo 30. Of course, they're going to keep it on the ground. It was 3-1 to one on run plays. This time, it's Wicks, who's just showing off, really, running through the uh, prime scene tape over there. <laughs> and they're just going to keep it with their man. This one's going to set up a fourth down at the eight, fourth and that much. This is a huge play to establish momentum in the second half. They toss it to Wicks. He gets five yards. That's more than enough. That Jackrabbit running game was there when they needed it. And then Wiggity, Wiggity, Wiggity Wicks going to finish this one off. They need time to talk about it, but yeah, he got it. Polly takes a 21-10 lead halfway through the third quarter. You can see how fired up they are. They can kind of smell this thing. But it looked like the Diablos answered back on a 50-yard bomb to Monster. However, nah. 
You're gonna hit him with the nah mic? Let's go to the replay from the other angle. That's holding inside. <laughs> Not other way to say that, really. And the pass rush again got to Fever. Rodney Shorter forces this bad throw, and it's Juju on the spot gonna get this interception. Jackrabbit defense forcing turnovers, but the offense stalled out, and eventually that Diablo offense is gonna get going in the fourth quarter. Max Redfield again making a play. Well, Redfield's such a phenomenal athlete. You can only keep a great athlete down for so long. This time it's Monster over the middle, and then they're gonna give it to Suchek, who gets the touchdown on the plunge. Now 21-16, they need to go for two right here. If they do, they'll be a field goal shy of Polly. So this is a big play right here on the two-point conversion. The pass rush again getting into Fieber. Great job to get away. He completes his pass, but welcome to the chill zone. David Price says no deal. That was big. After Mission Viejo gets it back, five and a half minutes left. They're driving to win. That poly offense just wasn't good enough in the fourth quarter. They only got five yards in the fourth. This mission drive has to end in a touchdown if they want to win. This is fourth and four with two minutes left. He completes it to Redfield, who just made play after play. However, two plays later on the poly 23, Roman Wyant with a textbook sack. That sack was not built in a day, Mike. That's a 12-yard loss back to the 35. A huge play, and sometimes these games are just this close. Heave into the end zone, Matt Matai and Schnicker go for it. Oh my, just off the fingertips. Then the pass would be complete to Schnicker, but he's going to get tackled in bounds. The poly defense swarms to him. It's fourth and 18 with the clock running at the poly 30. We're now under 15 seconds. Last chance for the Diablos. Heave into the end zone. And it's out of bounds. No deal. Jackrabbits celebrating their first ever win over Mission Viejo in the playoffs. Sophomore Iman Marshall, new to this rivalry, but he, David Price, and all of these fans are celebrating. This is a big time win. You see Raul Lara says, come back here. I Get in give, here for the real thing. I want to give my sophomore quarterback a little bit of love. He was fired up. You can see how happy he is. This was a big monkey off the Jackrabbits' back. They not only beat the undefeated Diablos, who they had no chance of beating, they also are back in the CIF semifinals for the first time since 2008. Laura tells them not to celebrate. They don't play for semifinal appearances. They play for championships. All smiles were the Jackrabbits. 21-16, your final score. What an unbelievable football game. The Luga and Wicks, 36 carries, 214, and three touchdowns combined. That'll do it. A great scene after the game. Poly fans can't wait to find the camera, let you know who's number one. And the cameras couldn't wait to find Raul Lara, because suddenly he's a semifinal coach in the Pac-5. Jayon Brown, a little inspiration as well. Jackrabbits obviously faced such adversity this season, so much pressure from outside of the team, but they managed to come together and bond as a team. This is not our final football highlight of the season. <laughs> it was brought to you in part by McCarty's Jewelry, here for you since 1932. Boy, we will be here for you next week when Long Beach Poly hosts St. John Bosco in the Pac-5 semifinals. Because we're GazetteSports.com, and we are Long Beach Sports. Destroy!